welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. We are talking about our Dear Alice Live recap. Um, we did a live event here in Utah. Draper. In Draper, Utah. Uh-huh. 50% of the people came from out of state that attended, which was such a thrill. Yeah. So, cool, guys. so fun to meet so many of you. And then a lot of you bought e-tickets and had so many questions. And we didn't have time to get to the questions. I don't even think we were thinking that there would be questions. And so we apologize. Mm-hmm. It's going to be better next time. And the sound will be too. <laughs> we understand yes. there was a sound glitch. So we're going to make sure and fix that for the next time that we do it. But we wanted to, to do an episode dedicated to all of those e-ticket people's questions. We figured that probably a lot of you would want to know those answers. So yeah. we're going to answer all those questions here. Yeah. Lots to unpack. Yes, definitely. Do we just get into it? Let's or, do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say, it's just like, Overall, I just have to say it was it was so much fun. Mm-hmm. I know there there was like this kind of unknown for us because we were like, I think this would be really fun. Like it would be so much. It's always such a delight when we have people come to us from like when we're at market and say we listen to the podcast and we love it. So just like meet some of you, uh-huh. first of all, and just like give you a hug and thank you for listening, yes. and then just to teach you all the things that we couldn't do necessarily just right here. We were able to like visually show you a lot of styling tricks. And and just things that we're passionate about. So mm-hmm. overall, I thought it was a real success and Definitely. I had such a good time. Yeah, we were able to share favorite concepts with you too. Like this is our favorite way th- of making a bed right now. Here's different images that we're obsessed with mm-hmm. that are not our work. And here's ways that we do it in the showroom floor that we think are just very, very chic. We also went through like, we're not karate chopping the pillow anymore. Here's ways of doing your your pillows and um, here's ways to space plan your house. And many of you that um, are going to be putting up a Christmas tree for the holidays, you might rearrange your room. And when you go to put it back, like you should put it back in a different way. It's, it gives you like a fresh new start to the year. I think so. We just kind of challenge people to think about their spaces differently, to style your mantle differently, maybe your cocktail table differently. And I hope there was a lot there um, besides getting to answer questions live. And now we're going to answer some digitally which will be great. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really cool that that was kind of just like one day we talked about it. Like this would be fun to do. So it's kind of like the podcast. It was like started as a dream. We we're like, wouldn't it be awesome if we had our own podcast? And then, you know, we did it. Are. So yeah. proud of us for doing yeah, that. Proud of us too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Proud it's of us. scary to put yourself out there. Um, but it's, it makes it worth it when, when the people come up and they're like, Hey, this changed, this changed the way I think, or this changed um, my trajectory in life. I'm now doing interior design or as an interior designer, I learned from your, from your failure or from your experience. And I think it's um, lovely. I know Sue and I are both like not gatekeepers in any way when it comes to girlfriends, friendships, interior design, anything. It's just like, there's enough for everybody. Let's just share what we know. And, and this is a great platform to get to do that. And um, we love when you share back with us and you attended the event obviously it was so much fun surreal. and kind of a surreal it felt like a birthday of, yeah. of sorts yeah mm-hmm. so thank you for coming or for tuning in from um out of state wherever you were yeah, mm. yeah. or out of the country out of the thank country you yes you. definitely we had somebody i think from germany yeah Australia, germany Australia, Aust- canada yeah. yeah i think the uk like there was a couple maybe. yeah yeah i knew the countries. They have, but yes. It was and they probably tuned in at very inconvenient times in the middle of the night, so thank you. That's yeah. so cool. Um, so we're going to have Corey ask us the question, and then Sue and I will just answer it yep. the best we can, spur of the moment. Perfect. Okay. First one is from Patrick Bailey. Mm-hmm. Uh, he asked, what to do with a large blank wall that's not framed art? I feel like I have too many rectangles from all the frames in my house. This is a, this is true this. for most homes, I would say, Patrick, is yeah. that what do we what else can we put on the wall? Um, so I think one favorite trick of both Sue and mine, we're doing it here in our um, showroom back of house. Mm-hmm. We love to do a rug on the wall. You have tell them what you have in your stairwell. Yeah, I have this Moroccan rug that was actually intended for like the floor. But then I was like, this is actually too delicate. I'm like, this needs to be on the wall. And so we hung it in our stairwell. And I tell you what, it's like the best backdrop Mm -hmm. and it's soft and like, it's just, again, to that thing where everything's rectangle and everything's behind glass or just like hard, you know, and hopefully you have some organic lines, but I think any three dimensional 
object, be it a rug, you know, sculpture, anything like that is going to throw the cadence off. So you don't feel like you're living in like the land of rectangles. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think amongst your art too, you can break it up so that you've got photography in one place. You've got, um, pedestal and sculptures, painting. Yeah. Sculpture, textile. So really mixing up, you know, your different types of art keeps things really interesting as well. Patrick, because you have a really large wall, the rug, I think, is going to be your best bet just because Mm -hmm. it's going to take up a large mass of space. Yeah. And it'll feel a lot different, even though it might be a rectangle. It'll still have, like, loose edges and drape nicely. I think that would be beautiful. I think a key to this would be you're not just going to want any programmed rug that's available on every size on your wall. You're going to want something antique that that has a story. Yeah. That can, yeah, that's special. So um, I think you could use um, antique rug in your search for things. And then also if you know your size, um, that's going to help you narrow down as well. And then you're going to have a whole color palette to play with. So um, it might really ignite something that's happening in your room or you can get throw pillows to speak back to it. But Mm -hmm. I'm excited for you. It's going to be beautiful. I was also thinking, if I could just add two things. Yeah, of course. Um, Our uh, Phoenix mirrors. Like that, how it's oh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I was thinking like, what would I do? Something that was kind of irregular yes. that doesn't have a frame. I love mm-hmm. that about that. Um, and then obviously this would be framed, but whenever I see a gallery wall that's like a little bit just too intense, I'm like, man, that would just, in my opinion, just a huge piece of art, you know, where like the art stands out more necessarily than the shape of it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, those are just my two cents on it. I but. love that. Great. I love the I love our pair of Phoenix mirrors. They're irregular, they're rust, they're antiqued, mm-hmm. and they don't have a square edge. Yeah, and they reflect back what's happening in the room or they'll bounce light around the room. Mm-hmm. They give that really pretty rust, you know, colorway it, to the scene. It feels like art too. I think so too. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Great answer. Okay. Um the next one is from Teresa Nelson. She asks, Could we see progress pictures of the bathroom Suzanne is working on at her home? You guys, I'll take some. Okay. Take some in the next couple of days. Okay, <laughs> probably if yes. we yeah. like if we air this. Yeah, we'll show some. Well, cool. I should hopefully hopefully it'll be done by the time this airs. Let's be honest. Yeah. So so yeah. So I have some coming at you. Cool. It's yes. looking really good though. Also, Teresa, you should follow us on Instagram if you don't already. We'll probably be showing everybody that wants to see it on Alice Lane Interior Design. That's the interior design side of our business. We have Alice Lane Home on Instagram and then Alice Lane Interior Design. So we've shown an update on ALID, yeah. Alice Lane Interior Design account a while ago, yeah, but so much recent. has changed since. Yeah. So when we do share it on Instagram, if it's not quite ready to show yet when this airs, keep checking Instagram. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. The next question is from Carly Powers. Super cool name. Mm-hmm. How do I style my corner fireplace? So sorry, Carly. This is a great question. Yeah. I think something that a lot of people are plagued with. Uh huh. My friend, including my sister. I and I. It's it's not. I, we should maybe like throw up a picture of this mm. application. My sister had a corner fireplace in her last house. It was mm-hmm. one of those things that every time I would go over her, to her house, I'd feel so bad for her, and I'd rearrange things. I try and ignore it like completely, and just like <laughs> goes behind. I'm like maybe if we just don't look at it, it will disappear. <laughs> you know, like if it doesn't see me, I won't see it. Uh-huh. Um, didn't work that way, and it just was like, what's that weird thing happening in the background? Um, so we actually we did something really beautiful, and we made a cast mantle around it. We took you know scraped all the onions off of it. And we made this really pretty cast mantle that, like, instead of it coming out just at a 45 from the wall and accentuating, we actually took the whole cast and, like, dove it into the wall. So it made something really quite grand and really kind of made a cheese wedge, right, mm-hmm. on the top of that mantle. And then we I put a beautiful, regular-shaped mirror above it. But it was just, like, in a really clean mm-hmm. cast. And it looked like we did it on, on purpose. Mm-hmm. We weren't putting our TV above it. But on, Again, putting something non-directional above it, I think, is key. And then, like, I imagine that you might have a TV in this room or a console or something else beautiful. So maybe, like, send. don't try and angle your furniture on it. You know, just square up your rug like you would normally do and, and continue to do space planning, you know, to, like, be faced probably on the TV. And then you just, like, you put a beautiful chair next to it. And you just, like, you try and mask some of those um, that irregular architecture um, by just cleaning it up. I think yeah. that that's what I would do. That's what I did. So, 
I we'll post it. a picture on here. It I love it. Really, really pretty. Yeah. It was the best corner fireplace I've ever seen. I'm really proud that we made and if you lemonade can't, out of that really if you can't lemon. go to <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah shitty lemon. Uh-huh. If you can't go to all of the trouble of reconstructing a new mantle, yeah. at least put a round mirror above the fireplace. It takes the edge off. Yeah. You don't want to create more angles or squares there. You want the non-directional big the biggest round mirror you can Mm -hmm. um i think that's a really easy cure um to to make it work for right now and then eventually if you can do a great mantle like suzanne just described Mm -hmm. uh, it's it just looks amazing looks like a millionaire lives there yeah yeah cool the next question is from manuel carver Mm -hmm. um he asks what is well that's a great name right Yeah. yeah Some good names. Were these made up? No, I think they're <laughs> international. We should, we should name some of the new furniture after I these people. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, he asks, what is the most popular art frame right now? This is a great question. Mm. We're going to fight right now, you I feel like. First. Okay. You go first. <laughs> my my initial my instinct ready. was to say something that is um, more in the silver family. Because I think things are starting to cool down. Um, I, for the most part, am not a really big wood frame person so i'm usually and i'm not a painted frame person so i'm usually gold or silver is what i have throughout my house i have one of my favorite pieces is an original that is above my bed and it is sort of mid-century art in shades of purple and plum and whatnot but they put a gilded frame on it and i think it looks like a billion dollars like it's Mm -hmm. so cool so i feel like old originals i like them in some sort of guild Mm -hmm. but um frames that are um or art that is available in the marketplace to buy, like much like we sell our store, we don't have a lot of originals. We're always putting um, things that are more silver on them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah, if you're going to get something framed, I guess it depends on the artwork because we always frame for the piece. Yeah, um, you're gonna see what looks really good on it. And the Slim Aaron's look so good in that. I'll, white. I'll say this so frame. I'm not gonna like a modern day gold frame. I'm not. I'm not gonna want it to be like super shiny or gold. I want it to look antiqued or hand forged or like something leaked. like that. Leaked. Yeah. yeah so Have some depth to depending it. on the capability of your framer, silver is going to be the safest answer. If I have to give you one answer today, I'm going to say go with tones of silver or a gilver, a gold silver. Like it's a warmer version of silver. It's not a cold aluminum foily type of a silver. Yeah, and it completely just depends on your style. Cause I'm, I would say more golds and like, I think most of my frames are like forged. Yeah, no, well, like, but you it's have more like an originals. artist make them. Yeah. But if you think about like what's available at the frame shop yeah. today and you're just like, you don't know where he, where yeah. we don't know where Manuel lives. Mm-hmm. So depending, Manuel, yeah. I would say, I think what's important to me is I like the depth of it sitting off of the wall. I like. Yeah, the thickness. The floater frame. You uh-huh. know, where like the profile doesn't have to be big, but I'm like, if the actual thickness coming off the wall is big, I assume that that's original because I assume that there's a full canvas hiding beyond that floater frame. Good. Love. So I think if it's really flat and shallow up against the wall, I think that's a dead giveaway that it's probably not expensive. Yes. So so I go to the, the thickest it, frames. Yeah. yeah. And just depending on the art, like just, yeah, silver, silver gilver is probably easier to make look better than like a real g- good gold yeah. from a lot of stocked stuff. But if you can find something that like, if again, it's a, if it's intentional for the art and you can get a good, great framer, then do the real thing. Um, yeah, I I don't mind like a walnut floater frame though. Yeah, that's, that's really beautiful, pretty. classic. Yeah, also depends on the piece. Yeah. If you have a lot of white mat, I, I think don't that's love really a black pretty. frame. I don't either, and I feel like that's like the no fail thing that like most we go to like galleries, especially when they're first starting. They always yeah. throw like a black frame on it. I'm like, I would get I would get something reframed if I bought it in a black frame. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have a pile of them. Yeah, to get reframed. Does anybody want black frames? Everybody's Suzanne's gonna have a garage sale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and sell them. Yeah, yeah. They're just not my favorite. I hope that so. helps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kristen Cass, she asks, what construction of rug is your favorite to put under a bedroom carpet? <sighs> or Kristen. Put on a bedroom carpet. Sorry. Um, one that won't bunch up under the bed. Boy, this is a confessions by Usher right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the music. We so we know we know that this is a problem in the industry and we don't talk about it. But because you asked about to get real, Kristen. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna tell you the answer. And that is that Suzanne, Corey, and myself 
not one of us has a rug under our bed. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, it's because I'm too OCD and I hate it bunching Strain up. It. Yeah. Do you have carpet in your bedroom? Mm-hmm. So do I. So yeah. I, I even did a wool loop. I don't have a cut pile. So those fibers, when they move back and forth, create movement for that rug to just surf around on. Mm-hmm. And you're walking in with a laundry basket to fold laundry and you're walking in and out. And pretty Trip. soon that rug just crowd starts. It's, yeah. It is crowd surfing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I, I've i seen it so many times. We do it in clients' homes because a lot of times you have a huge bedroom and you've got to create sort of a room within the room, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't just have a bed floating in a room with tons of sea of carpet. You've got to create a sitting room, like a little living room over here, sitting room at the foot of the bed. Mm -hmm. But when you, something about it, when you try and put a rug on top of carpet and it wants to crowdsource, but then you put the weight of a bed on half of it, Mm -hmm. it's just going to get wiggly. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a recipe for disaster. So if you can keep the rug away from the, the weight of the bed, Put it at the foot of the bed with a bench and do a little sitting area there if you have the room or you have the room over to do another sitting area. I think between all of us, we don't have big bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And so the only opportunity to use a rug is under our bed. I have a small little sofa up against a wall with a chair and I put like a sheepskin under that as a rug or not, depending on the season. Sometimes I don't even have that and I just don't have a rug because I can't deal with the inability to keep that rug from shifting around. Mm -hmm. And we know what the outcome looks like, and our rooms are small enough that we don't have to do it. Yep. And we do. I mean, and if you are, you have a big room, and you want the rug, and we get it. It's beautiful. We love rugs. But, like, we always use a pad. Mm -hmm. But, like, even with that, like, using the premium felted one still is the best bet, Mm -hmm. pad-wise. We use rug tapes, too, to try and, like, get them down. A lot of times that works best, like on wood. I take it on the only time that I saw it successfully done where it stopped shifting when a carpet was, when a rug was on top of a carpet is when I had the carpet like manufacturer work with me on a heavy duty Velcro that we put like. We had sewn, hand sewn to the rug borders. We didn't have that. No, it was just like stuck on there because it was just industrial. Oh, was it? Living room. Like, was it sticky tape on the bottom? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, got it. We had to use it also at somebody's home. Mm -hmm. And we had to have Velcro. Um, Velcro has a female part and a male part that makes this one's prickly and one's soft. We'll we'll call the male prickly, like (laughs) like he hasn't shaved in a while. Yeah, Yeah, we had to use the prickly part, not the soft part, so that it would grip the carpet and not shift. And we had to have project managers of the client and a lot of people involved. And after so much trauma of trying to solve this for other people the way we've solved it for ourselves is just to not use a rug in our small bedrooms if we had large bedrooms we would be using figure it out we would be using a rug or multiple rugs but i don't know it's a hard one it's a hard one yeah i used to have a very small room but it was hardwood floor in it so we had a rug under it then that works always beautiful um right? yes so one thing that worked out for us is that we didn't have a plinth base so I could like almost lift up part of the bed yeah. and try to like pull as much as I could and then do the same thing for the other side because I felt like I was constantly doing that. Uh-huh. So even with a wood floor, it was shifty. Because mm-hmm. it, w- it would just, That's when I would it would tape. bunch, yeah, it would bunch up underneath like, it would slide underneath the foot of the bed uh-huh. and it would, you know, then I'd have to like lift that up and pull it out. Oh, know? got so it. Yeah. Still doing that. Uh if I could go back, I would probably do a thicker pile, something with heavier weight, just to kind of like yes. weight it down I even more. Don't use a flat weave. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah. Um, so that's my, you know, uh, two cents on that. Just because I hated doing it, but that's the exact reason I don't have a rug in my mm-hmm. master right now. Yeah. Okay. Oof, that was juicy. Hear you. Mm. Yes, we, we hear, hear you, you, Kristen Cass. Yep. Uh, the next one is from Kathleen Allen. Uh, she asks, what are your thoughts for the choice of sectional versus sofa? This is a very good question. Mm. I am a sofa. I like the look of a sofa. If it's a, if it's like a basement family room where we're cuddling, mm. I want a sectional. Yeah. But like overall, like I think sofas are just prettier. So uh-huh. I like I the rhythm of a sofa on better. A main, on a main living space, I think yeah. they're pretty. And I like chairs too. So if you have a sofa, you have more room for more chairs. Yeah. And I'm into that. I like separates because I like to rearrange my furniture. 
it's a way for me to not feel like I have to sell my house because I feel like I get a new house every yeah, time yeah. I rearrange everything yeah. and I don't get as sick of stuff. I'm like, let's take that up from downstairs and move this down. Let's take this art. And, and luckily my husband is down to do it or we're doing a sh- lookbook shoot at my house. We have to take everything out anyway. And I'm like, I get to put it back in a different way, which is so fun. And when you have separates, um, you know, like to me, the sectional is kind of a onesie, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you've got one big decision, you've got one big decision that you've made, and then you only have a few separates. So having a lot of separates is giving me the ability to rearrange my house in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. That being said, we sell a lot of sectionals. It's a great answer for a big family. Mm -hmm. Um, It's probably the most popular thing to buy, I would say, um, in the sofa world. But for myself, I have more sofas. I have a sectional in my basement, but nobody hangs out down there. It provides more flexibility. It does. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like a sectional. It's you have a sectional yes. right now. Yeah. yeah. And I like having like multiple like spots. I don't know. I'm just feeling a different Corners. spot sometimes. Yeah. You know, if you, if I it. have a sofa, it's just like yeah. you got, you got left three. arm or right arm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not the middle. And it's pretty much the yeah. same. So that's yep. true. Yeah. Uh, Sure. I and guess I, I bet most, I, I imagine a lot of men would say that same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's, here, here's one reason why my vote shouldn't count. I only exclusively watch TV in my bed. I, like yeah. at the end of a day, mm-hmm. I, I um, don't like, after I've eaten dinner and cleaned things up and everything else, I just want to put on my robe and I want to lounge in bed and surf on my phone and have TV on there and be like, mm-hmm almost fully reclined or half reclined mm-hmm. so the sectional Buried would like a reclined. cocoon the sectional would give me that experience mm-hmm. because then I could have my feet up on the chaise or have my people lounging into me and whatnot and all of my people have left me and now it's just <laughs> me and my dog and my husband and so <laughs> we don't need to hang out in the family room <laughs> so funny. anyway so you can throw my you can throw my vote out if you want yep okay yeah. cheers Carly Powers asks so nightstands do not have to match. Mm. Carly, back in the days when Friends was popular, the more random and the more eclectic, the better. It depends on where you are in your journey on furniture, how old you are, what you've experienced in your life. Sometimes that found object is just really cool, and the randomness is really cool and chic, and you're eclectic, and that's part of the vibe. Mm -hmm. And I've been through that phase in my life, and now I'm in the matching nightstands phase. And I'm also in the matching lamps phase. And I feel like... Um, Real a balance to it. Yeah, there's a balance and um, sort of a chicness. Mm-hmm. But there's also a place, like, we've all had... Like, I've known you guys for so long, you know. I've known Sue's through her, her 20s and, you know, mm-hmm. 30s and now you're 40. And so we've all been in those phases where the random cute found thing was just like so rad and kicked it over the top. And you're like, this could be published in Domino magazine. It's so <laughs> awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you get into this uh, phase where you're like, I just want to, I just want to be published in just want to wear a El decor or yeah, Arc Digest. And I want to be chic and not overstyled and not overdone. And so I'm kind of like, I'm kind of in a matching moment right now. Yeah. And there's still place for that in art and in rugs and some of that found stuff and an antique chair and whatnot, but I just love a matching nightstand. We're doing it on pillows though too. Like I'm like a matching I'm pillow. Liking, I'm liking yeah. the pillows on each side, and then you could like throw like one random a ball yes. pillow or something just to like throw it off a little bit. But there's still balance. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like it's from a yard sale. Yes, and it know, looks I think, professional. I think it, just, it feels just put together, and like I think we're just yeah yeah we've experienced enough chaos that we just need something to match. Now I wouldn't do a matching dresser to my nightstands mm-hmm. like I think and I wouldn't buy the matching bed to the nightstands no. to the dresser so I think either like you just had like you it's you just know the, that uniform that little, pair that one spot yeah. where you can have like two things that are balanced on each side with the lamps at the same height because they're on the same level of t- mm. height of oh, table the luxury is <laughs> is really fantastic yeah so mm-hmm. for nightstands I would say match it unless you're Ralph Lauren and you have a 48 inch table that you'd like to throw out the end and yeah. for an end table which is probably why Carly got confused because we were talking about that totally. during the live um so yes indeed which yeah and if you have that i still think that's fun and then you nest like a really cool ottoman or something and that's very very chic and then on the other side you just have a really beautiful gentleman's chest yes a big french chest very cool it's just the pieces that you have Uh uh-huh um but if you're just buying new right now and you don't have to like go and find that one round table that's fantastic and the right move for this spot yeah do the matching nightstands but make them like generous and luxurious and then get really cool lamps love that's what i would do 
Teresa Nelson wants to know if you guys iron your sheets. Teresa, <laughs> thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you for thinking that we would. <laughs> we don't. This one doesn't even make her bed. I don't. I don't. So. Yeah, I yeah. think oh, I, I think my mother probably irons the top sheet or at least the top cuff that folds down and the pillowcases. But mom loves to iron. Like I think she ironed our underwear growing up. She loves it. Um, so, but yeah, I. I don't. I think if 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 I'm sleeping with my my linen ones, I'm gonna pull them out right before they're fully dry and pull them on and smooth. And linen will kind of take that on. If it's really wrinkly on the cuff, I might spray water and pull tight and you know get it to look that way. But it's just not gonna stay that way after you sleep on it after a night or two nights. And who has the time? I mean, if you have a staff that will do that for you, that's so great. Lovely. On Lucky, photo Lucky shoots, you. on photo shoots, yes, we're going to iron those pillowcases. Steam everything. Yes, we're going to steam everything so that it looks really crisp because nobody wants to look at that. Yeah, that mess of a thing. They don't want it to look like our real life. They want to see what a perfect state looks like. So we give them that yeah. for the photo shoot. Yeah. 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 I believe in the spray, though. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Especially if it smells good. <laughs> Linda Kay wants to know, how do you combine different styles? Think natural, earthy aesthetic, like Amber Interiors, her husband, versus more maximalism and eclectic, a.k.a. Steve Gambrell or <gasps> Ken Folk. Oh, Linda, I'm 100% with you. I love Steve Gambrell and I love Ken Folk. I was just talking to my brother about Steve Gambrell yesterday and said, okay. you need to paint your library more like Steve Gambrell would. Combine this combination of colors. It'll be so designer. I love that you said that. You yeah. need to paint your library like Steve Gambrell. I d- wait, <laughs> right? <laughs> so oh, good. I love I it. Love I love it so much. Okay, so how are we going to combine these, these really all-in designers with these more casual, laid-back, undone kind of really believable interiors like you really live that way right Mm -hmm. I think it's in the pieces that you purchase or that that could satisfy some of the things that he's wanting I think a lot of that boho amber interiors I think it's a lot of top layer and just like you might have like a natural woven like back on a chair and you might have like this like really like plastered cocktail table and and everything is pared down and and simple simple but I think your style with the Steve Gambrel and the Ken Folk I think they're going to use color and they're going to be maximalist. So I think the shell of the room, I think could be you, you know, and I think you could do something there. And I think in a lot of the layers, I think with the art, with some of these other maximalist details, I think you can add, but then just have some of the pieces, the base layer pieces can feel a little bit more boho and you can totally disagree. Those can be a little bit more boho, but, and so satisfying some of your husband's whims, partners, whatever. And then you can just like have a few different surfaces where you're layering a little bit deeper, mm-hmm. you know, and the, and the colors can be a little bit more deep based off of pa- paintings that you have because you're a maximalist. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the, the round yeah. I would take. And even, I think even in Ken Folk and Steve Gamble, a lot of their shapes, you know, are simple, but they're layered on something that's maximalist. Mm-hmm. It's not usually everything is, is maximalist, but it's just the layers in which they do it. And so some of them are a little bit more tailored prepared down and then it's just the layers that they're putting on top of it so yeah see what's the most important the hills that you don't want to die on and like satisfy that and then you get to layer around it is what i would do yeah that's a hard a really hard one i think you answered it really really well i was listening to jenna lyons on a podcast she was the creative director at j crew I think she was there for like 27 years, like at the beginning of her career and everything else. And now she um, does a lot of work in interiors. She was recently a housewife of New York City. And I feel like every woman has a girl crush on Jenna right now. Um, Anyway, she was talking about she's on The Expert, which is a um, a show where you can buy not, not a show, excuse me. It's you can consult with an expert in interior design and pay for them hourly. So you can ask Jenna questions herself. And she said, for me, it's really hard. For somebody to say, do you like this? And show them one thing. And she said, I, it's hard for me to tell if I like that. For me, I want to see, I want the entire look. Let's picture a dining table. And it's fully set. You've got, you know, the little baby lamps in the middle. You've got the placemats. You've got the beautiful silver and the china and the butter dish and the cloches and all of the things. And you're like, I can see that that is beautiful. If somebody mm-hmm. isolates one butter dish and is like, what do we think about this? And you're like, that doesn't matter. What matters is like the grand picture. Composition of it. And mm-hmm. so I think, f- I think for you, it's going to be really important to sort of create a North Star with your husband and see 
which of Amber interiors he's obsessed with and what he likes about it. Because what he likes about it might be different than what you think he likes about it. Mm -hmm. You can take the heroes from his and you can take what's important to you from those spaces. But you've got to North Star it and think of big picture. How is this going to come together? But if you continue to isolate little things from Amber's Amber interiors, like you buy her chairs um, and then you're trying to fit these things in, it's hard. You've got to really think of the full composition as you go. Um, That'll help your husband, too, to respect like your vision and for him to see that you're respecting his. And continue to work on what the finished look could be by looking at beautiful homes that you both really love and then figure out the merge there. And I think there is something, real, and I don't know if you guys are the same way, but when Tom reacts to something, he's just like, that's rad. I really like that. Like, I get excited because I'm like, I'm excited that you're excited about that. Yeah. I could do something with that. Yes. So I think it th- I think there's I think there's things that you can work with, and I think it's just being excited for each other mm-hmm. when the other person gets excited about something and just kind of build off that. And I think yeah. that creates a really harmonious home. Totally. Also, there might be something. Amber Interiors is going to be easier for your husband to understand where your taste with um, Stephen Gambrell and Looks. Ken Folk, they are more complex and they also look more expensive, in my opinion. And so he might think that, oh my gosh, I can't afford that. That whole look and vibe is just like such a grand finale. I'm going to need high gloss paint. I'm going to need finish work. I'm going to need, and he's just like, it's too much, you know? Or we might liken it to like an older generation too, because there are some traditional details yes. in there too, yeah. where Amber Tears is going to be more pared down and simple. Yes. You know? And it's easier to understand. And my husband likes things that are easier to understand also, because he doesn't know how to wrap his brain around it otherwise. So if you could really figure but out. he loves your house when you're finished with it. Yes. So I and think I think your husband might love it also. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really deep question. Yeah. That could be a whole podcast. Thank yes, you, Linda. That's really that was great. great. The next question, and forgive me if I don't pronounce this name right, uh, is from Nandhini Basan. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ask, when do you choose between a bench versus a day bed or sofa at the end of a bed? Good question. Depends on the scale of the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people, like my small room, I have one option, and that is a bench. I don't have the depth for a sofa or a day bed. Um, so I think it's a scale thing. If you have a lot of room, then you can enter in day bed or sofa. I like, I like a sofa because it comes up higher in the back. Day beds are generally a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends on your taste and your style, what day beds you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Um, also the day beds are really nice. So if you have young kids or a pet or something else so that they don't have to sleep in your bed with you. If you have so a that's day practical bed, though, too. If you yeah. have a, the room for a day bed, though, I would I would still go for a sofa because I think you'll use it more. I think yeah. like if you're like sitting working, you don't want to like get into the bed, but you're sitting working. Like I can throw up a little pull t- pull up table and work on my laptop in my room where it's comfortable. The temperature I have my slippers on, mm-hmm. all those things are like at perfect equilibrium, right? Yeah. But I think if a day bed, you just lose the back. Yeah. So, and I feel like in the showroom we have both right now, and we choose the sofa. Or the bench every time over the day bed. Yeah. Now the day bed could be cute in a sitting area off to I the left or it, right. Like in front of a window. Love. Love yes. a day bed. In front and of a it's window. like a fainting couch, right? Totally. Yeah. So yep. yeah. Hopefully that answers that. The last question is from Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Um, I wonder if it's from Patrick I Bailey. It's the same yeah. one. Uh, he asks, how do you determine the size for living room side tables? When do you use matching tables, spot tables, and smaller scale tables? Also do you decide between, how do you decide between a round versus rectangular side table? These are awesome questions, That's Patrick. Question. Yes. Okay. Um, I think this also depends. Like when we're, Patrick, when we're looking at our space plan, like from bird's eye view, we're looking down. We have a sofa. We have two chairs. We have a cocktail table. And for me, it depends on like, okay, am I using a cocktail table or am I using an ottoman? What shape is that? Okay. That's going to, I'm going to use Luca. And that's going to be around 48. I'm going to be more tempted to do rectangles that are like skinny and linear along my sofa. And I might match them. Yeah. A lot of times I will. I mean, again, I think it goes back to that nightstand question. Kind of that matching mood of just like kind of keeping where you have all these ecl- other eclectic pieces, having one thing that matches that I likes repetition. Mm-hmm. And so um, what like is Geneva? Yeah, Our Geneva, Geneva side is table. so beautiful. And it's glass top, the brass base. It's so pretty. And just like, yeah, we have it right behind Corey. Anyway, two of those with, like, matching lamps I think is so chic. Mm -hmm. So, so, so chic. And then you have your cocktail table, which is, like, a round or whatever. I I like using round cocktail tables. Wait one second. Let me quickly say this, too. 
one thing that's become really important to me in our work is knowing the height of the arm of the sofa and getting a side table that doesn't yeah. exceed the height of the arm. Now, if you have a tuxedo sofa, meaning the back of the sofa is the same height as the arm, then you have room for a taller table. But if your arms are shorter, like most mm -hmm. sofas, you've got to get a table that is going to scale pretty front to back on your sofa, right? Because if it's too short, it's going to look like a spot table as a side table, and you want generous surfaces mm -hmm. because you want to use those large, beautiful lamp, large cocktail table books. You want it to look really studied and really handsome, and scale always does that for a room. So our Geneva side table, we scaled perfectly to fit all arms of sofas, and also front to back, we gave it a lot of length because sofas now are 40 inches at least. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really generous that way. So I just wanted to say pay attention to your heights because that is going to be what is going to make it look like amateur hour or make it look like it come from another house and you didn't intentionally choose it for that spot. I have one condition. I, again, we can't see your room, Patrick, but if I was going into a family room that was connected to a kitchen and I had a sofa or, you know, with a deep corner. Yes. Then I would maybe use the round. Agreed. To then build up a scene. Yes. Build up a beautiful lamp and have a big, if you have like sofa, sofa, and you're not doing a section. Because that lamp. corner could be a dead corner. A dead corner for a dead corner. Or if there's a transition on the other side. Yeah. To you, where I'm passing by that every time I have to go to my kitchen. Yeah. I don't want to clip my hip on a corner. I would also consider it around at that point. Too. Agreed. So I think it's just like where it sits in like the pathways of your home. Yep. And just like, what is your vantage point? If you have, it's a really clean, like symmetrical vantage point, do matching ones. Mm -hmm. If you have a deep corner that you need to fill up, I think go around. Yep. yep. Agreed. That's great. Oh. You also wanted to know when to use spot tables mm -hmm. and smaller scale tables. Like these are so, uh, what do we say? Like I, I collect spot tables like seashells. Uh -huh. like they're so easy to pick up. Yeah. And they're so, they can be so sculptural and so fun. I, and we use spot tables a lot just with like, Next to a chair. Mm -hmm. Always just like next to a chair, just like a quick little pull up. Often they can migrate. My kids pull them around all, all, all over the place mm -hmm. because it's easier for them to pull up and like eat their Lunchable on or what, you know, whatever it is, or just yeah. like bring it over to this chair and put my drink on it while I'm reading this book and mm -hmm. you know, put your cell phone down. We love it next to a chair. So, so a guest could have a place to put their drink down or their cell phone down. They don't Your need to be big. A uh, really affordable use of a spot table would be a garden, a garden stool, a garden table. It could be a little teak table. But it's just really accommodating. And people always forget to put the side tables in a room. And it's just a lot of upholstery. And there's not enough of those hard lines, which give it sort of this gorgeous um, framework. It's like not framing a piece of art. So yeah. we really love um, a small scale table. I like it overlapping a little day bed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, next to a little occasional chair. That chair in a corner needs a little spot table. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's surrounding chairs, I would say. Yeah, yeah as a rule. Yep. Yeah. And then, yeah, we answered the how we decide between um, rectangle and circular. So, yeah. Did yeah. we do it? That was I think it. we did it. Yeah. Great. Nice. Guys, thank you That's for tuning Dear in. Alice. That's for so Dear Alice. And if, if you didn't get to watch Dear Alice live, when we do it again, we'll make sure and announce it so you can tune in either digitally or in person. But your questions have been so fantastic, and it's been fun getting to connect with you on these answers. If you guys have questions for us, please send them to Dear Alice at alicelanehome.com, uh, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So ask us questions there, and we can either turn them into a full episode or put them in our Q&A section. And we will catch you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 